Morning, everybody. It's good to see you again. So today, as always, if you wish to turn on your camera, I've got a big screen up here so that I can see you practice. I'll be practicing along with you for the majority of the class, but from time to time, I'll look up there. And uh, if you do want to have your camera on, that will enable me to give you some feedback. Now, if not, totally fine. No big deal at all. You can leave the camera off. So for now, if you will, just sit up really tall. <clears throat> and once you've established a good seated posture, close your eyes for the next few moments and redirect all of your focus to your inhaling and your exhaling. Maybe take a few deep breaths. And then return to completely normal and natural breathing patterns. And just be aware that you're breathing. And use your concentration on your inhaling as well as your exhaling. Just simply stay present for the next few moments. And then today we'll start with the nine part breath, one of the many alternate nostril breathing patterns. <clears throat> when ready for that, lift your right hand to your face and place the tip of your index and middle finger right between your eyebrows. Breathe in deeply. Exhale all of your air. Use your thumb to block the right nostril and inhale through the left. Bring finger to left, exhale out the right. Breathe in, left side. Breathe out the right side. Again, breathe in, left. Exhale out the right. Breathe in through the right side. Breathe out through the left. Inhale right side. Exhale, left. Inhale, right side. Exhale, left. And drop your hand to your lap for now. Breathe all the way in. And hold your breath. Exhale through your nose, all of your air. <clears throat> Again, breathe all the way in. Hold at the top. Exhale all of your air. <clears throat> And then one final time, breathe all the way in. And then hold. And watch your exhale go really slowly. And at the end of your exhale, pause your breathing out once more. Just relax mentally and physically as you stop breathing. And then breathe in. Breathe out. And return to completely normal breathing patterns for now. And 
And then join your hands together in a prayer at your chest. And think of someone in your life who could use some positive energy. It can be anyone, anywhere. You know, send that person some good vibes. And in your way, dedicate your practices to them. All right, then opening up your eyes, step all the way back to the four-pointed kneeling position. Make sure your shoulders start out directly above your hands and that your knees are just a bit behind your hips. And then some freestyle cat cow creas. Round your back and arch your spine. But additionally, feel free to move around in other ways that feel nice. One well, of the benefits of stretching earlier on in the day is that your body is a bit more dehydrated. You oftentimes feel the stretches a little bit differently than, when you're late, than you would later on in the day when you've been moving around a lot. And so here you can distinctly figure out different areas in your body that really need some work. So as you move, just pay attention to which areas feel blocked. Take note of the areas where you feel kind of open. Also recognize and acknowledge those areas of your body where you don't feel much of anything at all. And for the next few moments, just explore everything from the inside out. And then for the moment, shift to the high plank position. And you can use your knees on the floor if you find it helpful. Lower all the way down to your belly this first time around. And then prop yourself up on your elbows so you look like an old school sphinx. Press your elbows into the floor and lift your collarbones. And then lift your chin as well. And for the next few moments, slide your shoulders down away from your ears toward your belt. And some slow and expansive breaths while there. Now lower yourself all the way down to the floor. Plant your hands near the bottom of your ribs. You can use your knees on the ground if you like, but then press to the up dog with an inhale. And lift your hips upwards again for the down dog stretch. Now once you've got into that, just use some pedaling to loosen up your hamstrings and your calf. And as you pedal, rotate your torso from right side to left side. And here at the beginning of everything, consider some really slow and deep breaths as well. Roll onwards to the plank position again. And then drop your knees down to the floor and thread the needle. Sweep your right arm across your center line. Once it's gone across, take your shoulder and your head all the way down to the ground. And then for the next few moments, just sort of relax and breathe into all of that. And drive down through your hand to come out of that twist. And then repeat the same over there on the other side. Sweep your left arm across your midline. Take your shoulder as well as your head down to the ground. And for a little bit, just keep twisting your spine. Now press down to come all the way upward and out. Shift to the plank position. Just make sure your shoulders are right above your wrists. And then lift your hips up into the air for the downward facing dog stretch. And then looking forward, and rock your shoulders toward your thumbs a little bit. Step or jump up near ish the front of your mat and come all the way up to the tips of your fingers. From there, take a forward fold. And of course, feel free to bend your knees a bit. From there, use an inhale to stand up, a straight spine, both arms up. Press your arms overhead as well as backward for a back bend this time around. As you hold the back bend, draw your hip creases back a little bit. Press your arms overhead as well as back. And just lift up to the base of your ribs till you feel some stretch. Next time you breathe in, come up. And then forward fold with your exhale and take your hands down. Lift to your fingers on the inhale. Then step your right foot all the way back to a lunge. Use an inhale to sweep your arms out to the sides and up. 
This time, pretend that you are doing a belly crunch and tuck your ribs down in the front. And press back through your right heel and drop your left hip crease straight down toward the floor to increase the bend in your front leg. Lean forward and plant your hands, then step to the down dog. Once you've done so, lunge your right foot forward. Left heel remains spun up. Sweep your arms to the ceiling above. Now, just like before, make your torso compact by tucking your ribs down in the front. <clears throat> Kick back through your left heel a little bit harder. And then just drop your right sitting bone straight down toward the floor. And at the same time, keep kicking backward through your heel. Lean forward and plant your hands on the ground. Step forward to the front of your mat. Use an inhale to come up to your fingertips. And then forward fold the next time you exhale. Standing back bend. Use an inhale to come up. Press your arms overhead as well as back for the bend. And then forward fold as you exhale and take both hands down to the ground. Now lift to your fingertips. Step your left foot all the way back. If it feels okay, take your knee to the floor. Otherwise, leave it up. And sweep your arms to the ceiling for a back bend this time. Now with your arms lifted upwards, press your arms overhead as well as back. Let your hips really sink down toward the floor, closer to the front of your mat. And then plant your hands on the floor down there and step back to the downward facing dog. All right, step your left foot all the way forward to lunge on the other side. And if you took your knee down previously, do so again. And then arms all the way up to the ceiling over your head. Bend your front leg as deeply as it'll bend. Let your hips sink down toward the floor like a fishing net filled with rocks. And just keep reaching your arms overhead as well as backward for now. All right, good. Plant your hands and step forward to the front of your mat. Come up where see your fingers. And then take another fold with your exhale. Use your inhale. Sweep all the way up to standing. Once you're there, grab your right wrist with your left hands. Pull up through your arm so your arm feels nice and long. And tip your torso to the left. Try to keep the top of your pelvis level by hiking your left hip up just a little tiny bit and breathe into the spots to stretch. And the next time you breathe in, come all the way back up to the top. Switch your hands positioning so that you're grabbing the left one with the right hand or whichever one has not been done, and then tip in the other direction this time. Take your right hip up just a little tiny bit so your pelvis feels level, and reach strong with your hands and your elbows. Now use an inhale to come all the way back up to the top. Then forward fold just as you have previously. Both hands down to the floor. Bend your legs. Use an inhale to sweep your arms upwards for the chair. Now with your hands joined together in a prayer position at your chest, twist left, cross your elbow over your leg, join your hands together in a prayer, and for the next little bit, just keep rotating your spinal column off to your side. Slow and deep breaths as you continue to twist and spin. And use an inhale to sweep both arms all the way back up. Join your hands together in a prayer at your chest. And spin and twist over for the same posture on the other side. Just keep pressing your hands together as you rotate and unwind your spine. All right, back to the middle for the chair. Sweep both arms all the way up. Then take a forward fold with your exhale. Lift upwards to your fingers on the inhale. Chaturanga push up the next time you exhale. The up dog with an inhale. And the down dog stretch with your exhale. Now, in this one, straight arms are the most important thing. So squeeze your elbows in toward your skull. At the same time, press out through your hands and take up any slack that might have created by pressing your heels a slight bit closer to the ground. All right, a few rounds of Surya Namaskara A. Take a look forward and then step or hop to your thumbs. 
rise upwards onto your fingers. That's it, Amy. And then fold forward with your exhale. <clears throat> Straight spine. Use an inhale to sweep to standing. Arms to the sky. Hands to your chest with your exhale. Inhale to sweep your arms upwards. Forward fold the next time you exhale. Lift to your fingers on the inhale. Chaturanga push up with an exhale. Squeeze your elbows in tight to your ribs. Nice, Tara. Up dog on the inhale. Then the down dog stretch with your exhale. This time come way up to the very tips of your toes. Pretend you've got a human-sized clothes hanger underneath your hip creases and use the clothes hanger to lift your hip creases higher. And from there, feeling as though you're hanging from that point, slowly press your heels down toward the floor until you get a good stretch again. Once you settled in, in a few rounds of deep breath. And step or jump to the front of your mat. Come upwards to your fingers once you have. Fold with your exhale. Use your inhale to sweep all the way up to standing. Hands to your chest with your exhale. And inhale to sweep them upwards. Fold forward as you exhale. Lift to your fingers on the inhale. Chaturanga push up with your exhale. The up dog with an inhale. And the down dog stretch with your exhale. Right, so this time we're going to get your hamstrings a little more. Step or jump up to the front of your mat. And then come all the way up to your fingers. And heel toe your feet apart till they're separated by about hips distance. Now walk your hands a bit further forward. And come up to your fingertips. If it helps, you can really bend your knees. Regardless, lift your toes away from the floor. Like you're lifting them away from hot coals. And if you're feeling more adventurous and you want to go further, rock way back onto your heels. Lift the balls of your feet completely. And for the next few moments, just stay risen onto your fingertips. And breathe deeply. Now the next part is just the opposite. Take the balls of your feet back down to the floor. Widen your hands a little bit. And from there, try to lift your heels off the floor so you're more on the balls of your feet. If you want some additional challenge, press your palms closer to the floor beneath. Just like before, keep breathing. Now bend your knees substantially and slide your hands underneath your heels. So your fingertips are under the heels themselves. For that, you might need to bend your knees a lot. Find a position where your belly and chest can rest on your thighs. Curl your chin to your chest. And then just lift your hips a little higher upward than the air to deepen the stretch. If you like to work towards straight legs, go for it. Otherwise, feel free to keep a micro bend in your knees instead. Press your face towards your legs like you're pressing a postal stamp onto a ladder. And then use your next inhale to lift to your fingertips. Now there's a lot of forward folds, so move back to the high push-up position. Once you've done so, lower all the way down to the floor. And to counter, plant your hands in a push-up position initially and slide the bottom rim of your ribs further forward. Lift your hands and your chest and your legs all the way off the mat. And then squeeze your shoulders back and together as you hold and maintain. This one's called Shalabas, the locust pose. As you practice it, try to drag your chin ever so slightly downwards towards your chest. Now plant your hands near the bottom of your ribs and take your feet to the floor. From there, press to the up dog. And lift your hips upwards for the down dog stretch. Step your right foot forward. Turn your left heel down to the floor. With your front leg remaining bent, come up to warrior one. Hands can be apart. And if you're able to interlace your hands above, you do so. And stretch upwards through your hands. Now kick through your left foot. Bend into the right leg. And for the next few moments, if the balance allows, gaze up towards your outstretched hands. Try 
chaturanga push-up the next time you exhale. I push up to the the up dog with an inhale. Slide your shoulders down toward your belt. Nice. Donnie, back to the down dog stretch. Step your left foot all the way forward. And turn your back heel down to the ground and reach both arms up to the ceiling again. Now, with your back heel on the floor, it's hard to square your hips, but even so, roll your right hip a little further forward. Yeah, just like that, Michelle. Good. Now, keep your back leg straight. Bend into the front leg. Gaze upwards towards your hands. Like before, hands can be interlaced or not. Totally up to you. Beautiful. Chaturanga push up with your next exhale. The up dog with an inhale. And then all the way back to the down dog with your exhale. Step your right foot forward. Walk your hands across the ground and face the long edge of the mat. This time, turn your toes out. And bend your knee like the center from the Patriots and tuck your ribs down in the front so your torso is compact. Now try to keep your torso parallel to the floor. Reach both arms all the way out to your sides and bend your legs just a little bit more if your body will allow. If you want to amp things up, turn your palms up toward the ceiling. Extend your arms forward. And as you do that, shift your hips back just a little tiny bit to counter the weight moving ahead. Now let your arms hang down near the ground and bend your legs a little bit more and come up to the horse like you were sitting in a saddle. Sink down, reach both arms all the way up. Press your arms overhead as well as back and keep breathing deeply for this one. It's intense, I know. And then straighten out your legs, reach your arms way out to your sides and take the biggest step to get back to the front of your mat. Now, once you've done so, keep your hands in a prayer. And bend your legs kind of like you were doing the chair pose. Slide your right foot back a little bit and come up to the tiptoes of your right foot. Now, draw your right heel up to your booty. Bend your standing leg substantially and lean forward over your leg beneath. Lean forward even more. Float your foot all the way back. Turn your rear heel to the floor and then come up to warrior two. Once your torso is facing right, turn your left hand straight upward in the air. Reverse the warrior by side bending right. You can, of course, choose how much you like to bend your front leg, but bend it until it burns at least a bit. And focus on really stretching your side, reaching through your left fingertips. Now keep reversing, and as you do so, straighten out your left leg entirely. See if you can pick up just a little bit more side bend by really reaching through your fingers. Next time you inhale, come all the way up. Maintain your length. Reach out as well as forward like you're trying to grab an apple off of a tree. And then drop your left hand down. Reach your right arm to the ceiling for the triangle stretch. And just rotate everything up into the edge. Bend your leg, plant your hands on the floor. High push-up position. Hello. Then the up dog with your inhale. And the down dog with your exhale. Step or jump up to the front of your mat. Come up to your fingers. Fold with your exhale. Bend your legs. Inhale, arms up initially. And then join them together in a prayer at your chest. Now, if you slide your foot back a little bit so your left toes align with your heel, you can come up onto the ball of your foot. And if you want to go further than that, draw your heel up to your posterior. Try to keep your hips squared with the fronts and sink into your legs substantially as you hold. Now, if you give yourself a little more forward lean, your rear leg will float all the way back. Take a moment to turn it to the ground. And pop up to warrior two with your torso facing sideways. All right, press your knee over toward your baby toe a little more. Spin your right hand to face up. Reverse the warrior and another side bend. 
Today, try to make this a true side bend by keeping your belly and your chest facing the side wall and bend your front leg until you get some burn again. Now you'll definitely get more side bend if you straighten your legs, so elongate. Take up the slack by sliding your hand just a little further down if your body allows for it. Reach strongly through your right fingertips. Then inhale to come up. Now to maintain the length across the side of your body, reach out like you're trying to grab another apple off of the tree. Drop your hand down. Reach your left arm all the way upwards in the air to the ceiling. Try to twist your torso like a screwdriver. Spin your right chest into the left chest. And try to keep everything long as you twist. Now the transitioning is just a slight bit different. Bend your leg and then plant your hands on the floor near the long edge of your mat. Straighten your legs and turn your toes over to face the side. Then turn your toes out. Place your hands on your inner knees. Lean forward till your torso gets parallel to the ground and press your knees apart. Twist to your left. Dip your right shoulder toward your left inner knee and try to straighten your right arm out completely. Square your chest with the floor beneath you. Rotate and spin over for the same posture on the other side. Squaring your chest with the floor beneath you. Take your hands to the earth. Straighten your legs and turn your big toes all the way into center. And then rise all the way up to the tips of your fingers. Widen your feet if it helps. You want your feet to be substantially wider than your hips, about four and a half, five feet apart. Walk your hands back. Hold from there and stretch the top of your head closer to the mat. Now shake your head yes a couple times till your face levels with the wall that you're looking at. Press your face to that wall towards your knees. Sometimes that'll lock your ribs down in the front a little bit and center your sitting bones right above the ankles. That was it, just right there, Tara, good. Now for the next few moments, imagine that close hanger under your hip creases. Use the close hanger to lift your hip creases up. And just keep stretching the top of your head close to the floor beneath. Use your next inhale to come back up to your fingertips. Take your hands to your waist and squeeze your butt muscles. And slowly stand all the way up to the top. Next, walk your hands down the backs of your legs. Shift your hips forward and take a little back bend to start. If you want more back bend, walk your hands further down the backs of your legs through your hamstrings. Bend your knees. I like you're doing the limbo at a New Year's party. You slip up to the base of your ribs. Roll your chin back to stretch your throat as well. Roots through your feet, use an inhale to rise up. And take your arms way out to your sides. And a big, gigantic step to get back to the front of your mat. Inhale to sweep your arms upwards. Exhale for the forward fold. Inhale to your fingers. Step your left foot back with an exhale. Walk your hands further forward and turn your fingers out. Now for the half moon, straighten your front leg and lift the back one off the ground. Rotate your left hip open to the edge and stay there if you wish. Otherwise, reach your left arm straight up to the ceiling over your head. And just lift your back leg really, really high as you hold. Place your hands on the ground, stack one foot next to the other, come up to your fingertips. From there, hands to your waist. Use an inhale to stand up and pause at vertical. Now this time, turn your toes out just a little tiny bit. And draw your right knee toward your chest. Either grab your knee with your left hand or the blade edge of your foot. Then standing tall, reach your right arm directly back with your thumb facing up like you were hitchhiking. Slowly start straightening your leg if you're grabbing the foot or simply keep your hand on the knee. 
and rotate your chest to the right hand side of the room. Windmill your foot back down to the floor and your hands together in a prayer at your chest. Use your inhale to sweep both arms all the way up. Forward fold as you exhale and take your hands down. Now lift up to your fingertips. Step your right foot back this time. Steeple your fingertips. Turn all 10 of them out. Half moon, step onto your front leg again. Rotate your hip open to the edge. Reach your right arm straight upwards into the air. Yeah, that's it, Olivia. Now lift that right leg way, way, way upwards to the ceiling as you hold the stretch. Take both hands down to the floor and stack one foot next to the other. Come all the way up to the tips of your fingers. Move your hands back to your waist. Stand up and pause at vertical. Now, if turning your toes out doesn't help a lot, definitely keep them parallel. Everybody's different in that respect. But if it does help, turn them out just a slight bit. All right, draw your left knee all the way up to your chest. Opposite hand to opposite foot proposition. So reach across and grab your knee or your foot. If you've got your foot, extend it forward while reaching your other arm back and turning your thumb up. And then just twist. Rotate your whole entire torso open to the edge of the glass over there. Yeah, Donnie, stable man. All right, drop your foot all the way back down to the earth. Join your hands together in a prayer at your chest. Uh, one more balance. The dancer's pose. Reach your left arm straight upwards in the air to the ceiling. Take your right hand back and grab a hold of your right foot. Wait for the wobbles to pass. Should they, kick your foot upward into the hand and wait for the wobbles to pass again. If they do, then lean forward just a little bit at a time while maintaining your upward kick. Yeah, Michelle, that's ready for holiday cards. Very good. Nice job. All the way back up to the top. Drop your foot and join your hands together in a prayer at your chest. Remember, sometimes affixing your eyes to something can help too. So reach your other arm up to the ceiling and try to keep your gaze stationary on one solid object. Reach back and grab your foot with the other hand, whichever side is not bent up. Once the wobble's passed, keep your gaze centered. Press your foot straight up. With your gaze still centered, if your body allows, then lean forward a little bit at a time while maintaining your kick. All right, all the way back up to the top. Drop your foot and join your hands together in a prayer at your chest. For the next few moments, close your eyes. Redirect all of your focus to your breath. And again, just be mindful and aware of the fact that you're breathing. If your mind does wander somewhere else, notice as quickly as you're able to and redirect to that observation. Use an inhale to sweep your arms upwards and then backwards for a minor back bend. Forward fold with your exhale. Lift to your fingertips. Step your right foot all the way back. Take your left hand to your knee and rotate your torso to the left. At the same time, press back through your right heel strongly. Now, if your knee is sensitive, keep doing that. Otherwise, take your knee all the way down to the floor in the back. Straighten your front leg just a little bit to shift your booty toward your heel and then attempt to bend your back leg. If you can reach back and grab your foot, do so. Kick your foot backward into the hand and then bend your front leg again substantially. And this time around, take a back bend to open the walls of your chest and your quadriceps as well. And that doesn't work. You just hold the twisting one instead. All right, release that, plant your hands on the floor, step back to the downward facing dog, and then lunge your right foot forward. Take your right hand to your knee, and come up to your left fingertips, and twist things right. 
Now, if you're going for that bind, your right toes are naturally going to spin out to the sides. Maybe help them along, spin them right, and then consider taking your back knee to the ground. Now, sometimes you can just bend your leg and grab it. Oftentimes, it's helpful to straighten your front leg a little bit. You should thereafter be able to bend your leg a little bit more, reach back and maybe grab your foot. And if that worked for you, let your hip sink down. Squeeze your right shoulder back and take a back bend as you keep kicking back through your foot. Now let go of that one there. Plant your hands and step back to the high push-up position and then drop your knees down to the floor. The next one's called the tiger's pose. Curl your toes under behind and then lift your right leg straight up. Remember, keep your eyes gazing, locked on something solid, and then reach your left arm way out to the side. Now, if you're going to try binding, sweep your right leg across your midline, reach back with your left hand and try to grab your foot. If you happen to get your foot, kick it upward into the hands and try to keep your eyes locked on your single and solid point. And drop your knee and your hand all the way back down to the earth. Once you've done so, lift your other leg straight upwards. And reach your right hand out to the side. If you're having a hard time finding your foot, swing your left leg across your midline. You can even do figure eights in the air with your right hand to create some spatial awareness. And sometimes you'll surprise yourself by grabbing the foot. If you get a kick it straight upward in the air into your hands, squeeze your right shoulder back this time. Then let go of the foot. Walk both hands forward toward the front of your mat. And take the puppy dog stretch. With straight arms, let your armpits sink closer to the floor. If your forehead will come to the earth, take it there. If your chin will rest upon the earth, take your chin all the way down. And just let that whole middle section of your spine descend closer to the earth beneath. All right, shall round your spine in order to lift your elbows. Roll yourself all the way down to your belly. Then once you're laying down, bend your legs. Reach back to grab a hold of your feet. We're setting up for the bow posture. And right, now once you've got your feet, tip a little more weight forward toward your chin by leaning forward till your forehead almost touches the floor. Without lifting your head quite yet, press your feet straight up in the air into your hands. Perfect. Now look forward to lift your head. And just try to keep your feet pressing way, way, way upwards into the air. And if you can, lean just a little bit of weight forward so most of the weight goes down near the bottom rim of your ribs. Press your feet a little higher once you've done that. Beautiful, Amy. Come down to relax. Let go of your legs and wave your ankles from one side to the other side. Drop your feet all the way down to the floor. Plant your hands near the bottom of your ribs and then press to an up dog with an inhale. And the down dog stretch with an exhale. This time, take your knees to the floor and come up to a high vertical kneeling position. Now, it's gonna feel a little strange today, but start with your knees narrow, a little more narrow than your hips. Curl your toes under and back and then fan your ankles out to the side so that your ankles are really, really wide. If you need to, you can take your knees a little further apart as you do that. Now from that position, squeeze your elbows back in together, roll your tail under for now, and practice rocking from your knee joint. Keep everything from your knees to your torso stiff, rock back and forth, and back and forth just a few times. The next time you rock back, hold there. Rotate right and try to grab your right heel. Rotate left and attempt to grab your left heel. If that doesn't work, practice with your hands on your waist. Now press your knees into the floor, lift up to the base of your ribs, and roll your chin back for the camel's pose. Ustrasana. All 
I root down through your knees to rise all the way up again. Now, if this bothers your knees, you can sit down any way you want to, but consider crossing your ankles, roll backward to a seated position, slide your legs straight, and then extending both arms forward, roll all the way down to a reclining position on your back. And bend your legs and plant your feet on the floor for the bridge position. Squeeze your arms tight into your sides and bend your arms to 90 degrees. Squeeze your shoulders closer to your spine. And then as you drive your elbows into the earth, lift your hips all the way upwards into the air. If you like the wheel, plant your hands on the side of your head. Press up to the straight armed back bend. And if you're not feeling the wheel today, just hang out in a bridge pose like me. And come all the way back down to the floor beneath. Once you've done so, heel toe your feet all the way together. Keep your arms bent to 90 degrees and squeeze your knees tightly together. Now, with your knees still squeezing, lift your hips all the way off of the floor and into the air. Now squeeze your booty once you're there at the top and keep pressing down through your elbows. With your hips still lifted, roll onto the blade edges of your feet, roll your tail under, press your elbows down, lift your hips higher, and keep squeezing. Then come all the way back down to the floor, squeeze your knees together, lift your feet off the ground with your legs still bent to 90. Make your arms into a beach ball shape with your fingers near your knees. Belly crunch up to the front and look at your kneecaps. Now, if you want to make it harder, reach your beach ball overhead and back. If you want to make it harder, still straighten your legs and maybe drop your heels a little bit. And then regardless, rotate from right side to left side to engage your abdominals again. And then relax back down to the ground. Reach your arms way out to your sides. Wrap your right knee over your left knee. Slide your hips way right. And then for the moment, drop your knees way left. And gaze to the right. Just like gravity twists your spine. Sweep your knees all the way back up. Recenter your hips with the midline of your mat and then cross your left knee over. Slide your pelvis way left and drop your knees way right. As you twist, gaze out and over your outstretched left hand. Now sweep your knees all the way back up. Center things with the midline of your mat. Cross your right ankle over your left leg in a figure four shape. Thread the needle, reach your arm through, grab your left leg. Once you're holding on to the left leg with both hands, recline back, squeeze your shoulders back in together, and press your right knee away from your chest. If you want to do a full reclining pigeon, belly crunch up more. Wrap your left elbow around the arch of the foot to hold it in place. Reach your other arm around so that your fingers are interlaced near the side of your shin. Still crunching up, pulling the leg toward your chest. Straighten your left leg forward. And if that doesn't make sense or this doesn't work for you, go with the reclining one that you were doing before instead. And this one, your back rounds quite a lot and the chin draws inwards toward your chest.
All right, everybody, release out of that one. Figure four on the left side. Thread the needle. Grab your right leg and recline backwards. If you're feeling the full reclining pigeon, you'll have to belly crunch up so you can hook your elbow around the side of your left foot. Your fingers then interlace in front of the shin, still drawn back pretty substantially as you straighten your right leg and keep your upper back rounded as you hold it. All right, they recline backward to the corpse pose. Once more, reach your arms out to your sides. Draw your knees towards your chest. Drop your knees over to the right and rotate your gaze to the left. Sweep them all the way back up and take the same posture on the other side. come up and find your way to the corpse pose flat out on your back on the floor. Just do whatever you have to do to get ready to be still. So back in my early 20s, before I taught yoga, I was working at a place called Newark Electronics. I did inside sales and I sold electronics and diodes and wires and cables to the federal government as well as Intel so they could make their processors. I was working there. I was in that unique point in my life where I was trying to establish my identity. And as so many people do with that stage in life, I tried to establish my identity by being a little bit different than the people around me. So whereas everybody in my office wore business casual outfits, I always wanted to set myself apart, so I wore three-piece suits to work instead. Now, there was one woman who worked at the office named Joan, and that totally rubbed her the wrong way. I don't know if she was concerned that if I dressed up, everybody else would be required to dress up, or if more likely she was just annoyed by the fact that I was in my early 20s and I was trying to set myself apart by being different from everybody else. Now, regardless, she and I got into it all the time. You know, she rubbed me the wrong way, I rubbed her the wrong way, and because our desks were pretty close together, we had altercations on a pretty regular basis. I remember one day, and I have no idea why, Joan was moved to one end of the office and I was moved to the other end of the office. Perhaps the office managers were trying to keep us apart. But I was elated, you know, whereas I had had to deal with her on a day-to-day -day basis, I hardly saw her after that point, and really, my life was a lot more peaceful as a consequence. Now, unfortunately, my peaceful state of mind didn't last too terribly long because after the shift, we got a new office manager who came in to oversee the sales operations. I think he was tasked with making us work harder and get more sales, so he really wrote us hard. I didn't like that too terribly much, and I was further annoyed by the fact that the guy couldn't spell. And so every single morning, he would send out these sales emails trying to motivate us, but they were so ripe with spelling mistakes and errors that I really had a hard time taking the guy seriously. So because of those two pretty petty things, every time I ran into him, I was annoyed by him as well. Now, at some point, I started to realize that as soon as one problem in my life ends, oftentimes another problem pops up. And since having realized that in that particular experience, I've noticed that theme happening time and time again. It might not be a person. It might be something that I have to fix. I get it done. A little time passes and things feel good. And then another problem pops up and another one and another one. Now, I think it's most likely you've experienced the same thing in your life because things are constantly changing. We all have preferences and needs. Sometimes the people in our life meet those preferences and needs. Sometimes they do not. And when they do not, it absolutely creates some friction. Now, I think it's because of that that the Buddhist monk Shantideva once said, if you were walking across a planet covered with thorns, you could do one of two things. 
You could walk around and you could pluck every single thorn on the planet, or you could just put on some really good shoes, and thereafter you could walk anywhere on the planet that you wanted to walk. Now, in that particular metaphor, the thorns, of course, represent problems. And either pulling the thorns or putting on the shoes represents the solution to those problems. Now, in this context, putting on shoes is meditation. You see, when you calm your mind and you calm your internal states, then whatever problems there are on the outside for a little bit feel as though they've been solved. The problems might still be there, but because you're protected internally, they bother you a little bit less. Now, I very much wish I'd been practicing regular meditation when I was hanging out with Joan. I think it probably would have helped quite a lot. But I think considering that you and I, most likely at this point in life, have lots of different challenges to be overcome, we'll practice a little bit of meditation in the hopes that protecting your mind will help you out with some of those. So for now, if you will, just let your mind settle and redirect awareness to your eyes. And to slow down your thinking, we'll practice restraining your breathing. We're going to pause for about five seconds repetitively at the end of your exhales. So breathe normally. And observe that natural pause at the end of your exhales. You don't have to breathe out all of your air to hit that pause. It happens naturally. Just observe the pause. And at the end of your next exhale, pause your breath for longer. Just hold it out. Breathe in. Focus on your throat. Breathe out. Hold your breath out and relax again. Breathe in. Shoulders, breathe out. Breathe in. Elbows, breathe out. Breathe in. Your wrists, breathe out. Breathe in. Palms of your hands, breathe out. Breathe in. Fingertips, breathe out. Breathe in. Your hips, breathe out. Breathe in. Your knees, breathe out. Breathe in. Your ankles, breathe out. <coughs> breathe in. Bottoms of your feet, breathe out. And breathe in. Your toes, breathe out. Breathe in. The sides of your body, and breathe out. Breathe in, back of the body, breathe out. Breathe in, navel, breathe out. Breathe in. Center chest, breathe out. Breathe in. Tips of your shoulders, breathe out.
Breathe in. Back of your neck, breathe out. Breathe in. Center of your chest, breathe out. Breathe in. Palms of your hands, breathe out. Breathe in. Center of the chest, breathe out. Breathe in. Bottoms of the feet, breathe out. Breathe in. Center of the chest, breathe out. Breathe in. Base of the spine and top of your head, breathe out. And for the next few moments, breathe normally to recover. And as you continue breathing, mentally recite the words rising, rising, falling, falling. Time those words so that rising, rising occurs as you inhale. Falling, falling occurs as you exhale. Continue reciting those words and when a strong thought bursts into your brain, shift all of your awareness to that individual thought. Look at it and mentally recite the words thinking, thinking until it dissolves. Once the thought is dissipated, redirect to the rising, rising, falling, falling of your breathing. When other thoughts pop into awareness, dissolve them with the words thinking, thinking. Every time afterward, redirect to the rising, rising, falling, falling of your breathing. If your mind is wandered, redirect it to your breath. And then relax your mind and just take the next few moments to simply be. And when you feel ready, let yourself slowly roll all the way over to one side. With both of your eyes closed, come back to a seated and cross-legged posture of some type. Join your hands together in a prayer at your chest. Remember the person you dedicated your practice to. Either pray for or wish for their happiness and health, or maybe simply send them some good energy mentally. Take a moment to be grateful for the gift of another day. And if you wish, repeat after me. May all sentient beings everywhere experience peace.